Hello everyone, Spicy Toast Gaming here, and today we're going to be doing a thematic tier list. We're going to be ranking all of the champions based on how well the deck works together towards a central theme. How powerful the deck is has no impact on this tier list whatsoever. The main aspects of the deck that we're going to be considering are the voice lines, how many cards in the starting deck fit the central theme, and the overall feeling you get while playing the deck. Now this will be without a doubt the most subjective tier list I have ever made, so obviously take everything with a grain of salt. We'll be ranking every champion and there's over 40 of them. Since there are so many and I don't wanna be here all day, I'm gonna try my best to be concise. If you're enjoying all of this Path of Champions content, definitely like and subscribe and let's get into it. Up first we have Aatrox and his theme is centered around his side of the Darkened Civil War. Overall the deck works quite well together with some excellent voice lines, but about a third of his deck either doesn't fit at all or is only a partial fit to his theme, which is why he ends up in the B tier. Next up we have Annie who is in a very similar situation to Aatrox. Her theme is centered around her experience in the Noxian School for Gifted Children. Most of the deck works incredibly well together and has some of my personal favorite voice lines in the entire game. Again, however, about a third of the deck doesn't fit with the rest of the theme, which is why she also ends up in the B tier. Next, let's take a look at Ash, whose theme is centered around the Avarosan tribe. This deck has some decent voice lines, but nothing amazing. The great thing about this deck, though, is that every card is contributing towards the central theme. Now, there's a couple cards that are only a partial fit, with those being wildlife cards, but there's no cards that are blatantly out of place, which is why Ash is our first addition to the A tier. Bard is up next and his theme is the Chime Celestials. Unfortunately, none of those cards actually have voice lines. Instead, they'll play some chime based sound effect when you play them. Also, nearly half of his deck does not contribute to his overall theme. Because of this, Bard drops down to the C tier. Next up, we have Darius with his theme of the Noxian military. Again, the voice lines are nothing special and roughly half of his deck is not contributing to his overall theme. So he ends up down in the D tier. Diana is up next with her theme being focused on the Lunari tribe. Diana has some good voice lines and has every card but one fully contributing towards her central theme, which places her up in the S tier. Up next, we have Echo with his theme being focused on his Zonite friend group. Echo has some of the best voice lines in the game and many of his cards playing off of each other. Also, nearly every card matches the theme perfectly. These factors put Echo up in the S tier. Elise is up next with her theme of spiders. Elise herself has some excellent voice lines and will normally say something for every type of spider you play. The spiders themselves obviously don't say much. Her deck is excellently crafted from a thematic perspective and nearly every card fits the theme perfectly. This is probably the closest thing we have to a perfectly themed deck, which is why she is up in the S tier. Evelyn is up next with her theme of soul sucking demons. The theme is very unique and interesting with some excellent voice lines of cards playing off of each other. Unfortunately, about a third of the deck is completely unrelated to the overall theme, which is why she can only make it up to the B tier. Garen is next with a very broad theme of Damasian military. The voice lines are fine, but nothing spectacular. Overall, every card fits into the general theme of Damasian military, however some only partially fit with Garen and would be much better suited to a Fiora deck, which is why Garen ends up being in the A tier instead of the S tier. Next up, we have Gnar, with his somewhat split theme of primitive Yordles and transforming creatures. Similar to Bard, the cards don't really have voice lines, but will normally make sound effects when played. Nearly every card fits the theme perfectly, with only two cards that either don't fit at all, or only partially fit. Everything considered, Gnar makes it up to the A tier. Gwen is up next with her theme of Elegant Ghost Party. It's a very strong theme with many of the cards interacting through excellent voice lines. However, about half the deck only partially fits the theme, with them being spooky ghosts, but definitely not invited to the party. Sadly, this drags Gwen down to the B tier. Next up, we have Alawi with an awesome theme of Nagake Boros and its worshippers. This deck has some decent voice lines with several of the cards playing off of each other. It's better than your average deck, but nothing crazy. Fortunately, nearly every card fits this awesome theme perfectly. There are two cards though that have virtually nothing to do with the overall theme, which sadly limits Alawi to the A tier. 
Jack is next with his theme of Jack's crew. Fairly straightforward theme, but his crew is filled with interesting characters, so that definitely helps. The voice lines are pretty good with plenty of interactions between the cards, and every card fits the deck theme perfectly except one. While this is a detriment, it's not quite enough to keep Jack from the S tier. On to Jax and his theme of Improvisational Weapon Masters. This deck has some exceptional voice lines which really make this deck feel like a team. Every card in the deck fits the theme, half of them fit the theme perfectly, while the other half only partially fit the theme, which ends up placing Jax in the B tier. Next we have Jin with his theme of putting on a grand performance. There are minimal voice lines and barely any cards actually fit the overall theme. This is a deck that definitely put all of its thought into the gameplay and virtually no effort into the theme, which is why Jin is our first addition to the F tier. Jinx is up next with the theme of Zonite Underworld. This deck has some great voice lines with most of the cards here working with the main theme. However, about a third of the deck goes against the main theme or only partially fits, which ends up placing Jinx in the B tier. Next up, we have Kaisa with the theme of the fight for Belveth. It's quite an interesting theme with all the supporting cards being focused on one pivotal event. The voice lines are also well done with some interesting interactions. Sadly, about a third of the deck doesn't contribute much to the overall theme, so Kaisa ends up in the B tier. Kane is up next with an interesting theme of Darkin Cultists. Kane himself has some excellent voice lines, but that's about it. Sadly, about half of his deck has absolutely nothing to do with the main theme, which is why Kane drops down to the C tier. Next up, we have Kindred with the theme of Ghosts and Gods of Death. As far as voice lines, the deck is top notch with many interesting interactions. Also, nearly every card in this deck contributes to the main theme. There are one or two which don't quite fit with the others, but it still works well enough that Kindred earns the S tier. LeBlanc is up next with her theme of Noxian Spycraft. The voice work in this deck is minimal, and roughly half the deck is completely unrelated to the main theme. This is another deck where they really focused on gameplay over theme, which is why LeBlanc is down in the D tier. Next we have Lee Sin with the theme of Students of the Dragon. The voice lines are decent with some limited interaction between cards. Unfortunately, about half the deck is unrelated to the central theme, which is why Lee Sin drops down to the C tier. Leona is up next with the theme of the Solari tribe. The voice lines for this deck are excellent, and nearly every card in this deck works perfectly with the central theme. There are two cards which don't fit perfectly, but they still work well enough with the rest of the deck that they don't seem too out of place. Overall, Leona goes up in the S tier. Up next, we have Lux with the theme of Fleeing the Mage Seekers. There are some great voice lines in the deck, especially between Lux and the Mage Seekers. Sadly, over half the deck has nothing to do with the central theme, which drops Lux down to the C tier. Next up, we have Master Yi with his theme of Wuju Monastery. Some decent voice lines in here, but it's roughly average with other decks. About a third of the deck is unrelated to the central theme, so sadly Master Yi is placed in the B tier. Misfortune is up next with the theme of Pirates. Again, the voice lines here are just average with Misfortune doing most of the heavy lifting. Most of the deck fits well together, all contributing to the main theme, but roughly a third of the deck is unrelated, which means B tier is the highest this deck can go. Next, let's take a look at Nami and her theme of Underwater Creatures. Since several of the cards are more of animals than actually people, there are minimal voice lines. Also, nearly half the deck is unrelated to the central theme, so Nami ends up in the C tier. Nasus is up next. I'm sure most of you already know where I'm going to be putting him. The theme for Nasus is the Bakai, which are the other humanoid animal people like Nasus. Describing them like that kind of just makes them sound like furries. The voice lines here are minimal and almost none of the cards fit with the theme. This is probably the worst made deck in the game, both from a gameplay and thematic sense. Down to F it goes. Orn is up next with his whole theme of forging. This deck actually has some excellent voice lines with most of the cards being able to interact with each other. About half the deck fits the theme perfectly, with the rest being a mix of somewhat supporting theme and not supporting at all. Overall though, 
Orn earns the A tier. Next up, we have Pike with a theme that I love, despite it also terrifying me. His theme is Lurking Sea Monsters. Since most of his cards are fish, the voice lines here are unsurprisingly few and far between. The deck works quite well together though, and there are only two cards that don't contribute to the overall theme, so Pike goes up to the A tier. Samira is up next with her theme of Bounty Hunters. The voice work here is excellent with plenty of interactions. There are two cards that don't follow the theme though, so Samara lands in the A tier. Up next we have Set with his theme of Fight Club. The voice work here is decent and definitely better than average, but worse than the two other decks that released with him. Overall his theme is strong, but about a third of the deck doesn't support it, which drops him down to the B tier. Tom Kench is up next and his theme is Amphibious Crime Ring. Voice work here is well done and really brings these characters to life. Most of the deck comes together quite well, but there are a few cards that don't quite fit the theme, which keeps Tom Kench on the A tier bench. Next we have Talia and her theme of Nomadic Stoneweavers. Again, this voice work is quite well done with every follower having something to say. Every card in this deck helps contribute to the main theme. About a third of them only partially fit the theme though as they're technically zillion cards, so that keeps Talia in the A tier. Timo is next with his explosive theme of Puff Caps. Voice work here is better than average, but not by much. The deck comes together wonderfully though, with there only being one card that doesn't support the theme, which is why Timo earns his spot in the S tier. Next up we have Thresh, with the fairly broad theme of Shadow Isle Spirits. The voice work here is just fine. I'd probably put it slightly below average, but the deck does follow the theme rather well. There are a few cards that don't quite fit the theme, which ends up putting Thresh in the B tier. Varus is up next with his theme of Bow-Wielding Cultists. Unfortunately, this deck is all over the place with very few cards actually contributing to the main theme, and the voice lines do not make up for it in any way. Varus heads down to the F tier. Next, we have Vayne with the awesome theme of Monster Hunters. The voice work here between the characters is wonderful, some of the best in the game. Other than one card, everything is working together to bring this central theme to life, which is why Vayne goes to the S tier. Up next, we have Vagar, the tiny master of evil, and his sinister theme of being a supervillain. The voice lines here are amazing and often hilarious. These characters have so much personality and it's a joy to listen to them interact. Overall, the deck works quite well together. However, there are several cards which contribute nothing to the main theme, which is why Vagar is sadly stuck in the A tier. Vi is next with the theme of Piltover Police Force. There are some decent voice lines here, but they're few and far between. I would generally rate this deck as subpar in terms of voice lines overall. Sadly, the rest of the thematic elements aren't much better, as several of the cards only partially fit the theme by only being Piltover cards. But there's also one card that completely goes against the theme by being a Zonite card. All things considered, Vi ends up in the C tier. Next up we have Yasuo, and his deck doesn't really have any central theme. The deck is only built around the gameplay mechanics, which ends up placing Yasuo in the F tier. Last up we have Yumi, with the theme of Magical Library. Yumi herself has some decent voice lines, but that's about it. Unfortunately, this is another deck that only has a couple of cards contributing to the central theme, and the rest being a random selection of Yordle or Targon cards. This ends up placing Yumi down in the F tier. That is it for our thematic tier list. I hope you enjoyed that video. It took quite a while to make and was a interesting experience. I've never made a tier list quite like this before. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. We're really trying to hit 10K subscribers by the end of the year, and we still have a long way to go, so any help you can give, I greatly appreciate it, and I hope you have a great day.